everybody, welcome back. Brand new year. Christmas vacation over. New Year's over. New Year just beginning. Everybody had a good Christmas, had a good New Year's, ready to be back for action. So, we're gonna have a quick chapel today. And uh, yeah, so let's get started maybe with Mr. Brown. Over to you. So that fountain that you hear is right behind me. It's kind of like an Old Testament fountain. Back in the Old Testament, there was uh, certain springs, you know, water that would come up from the ground, and it would fill these pools that would make these, you know, make them out of concrete or whatever, make these pools. And then people could kind of grab some water when they're thirsty, maybe feed their feed their animals or sheep or something like that. Interesting thing about the, uh, back in the days of Jesus, uh, it was okay to, drink in the same pool that you could kind of wash up in. You didn't really care that much. You know, you kind of wash your hands, get washed up. People didn't really take like big baths. Um, maybe, maybe you went to the River Jordan or something like that, Sea of Galilee, jumped in the water, but it was mostly you kind of got some water out of the pool and you kind of, kind of wash that way. It's kind of pretty easy. No showers, no hot tubs, none of that kind of stuff. So pretty easy. Another thing they use these things for, these pools, uh, is for baptism. You could have be baptized in one of these pools. So I want you to think a minute about your baptism. Well, yeah, I, I know you're saying best Ken, but I was only like six weeks old. I was a month old. How could I even think about that? Well, that's kind of hard to think about. Maybe your parents have some pictures, so that would be something to ask. Say, Mom and Dad, you guys have pictures of when I was baptized? And they could show you pictures of that tell you a story of who was around, what relatives were around, maybe who your godparents were, and they can explain your whole baptism story to you, which is a cool thing to do tonight. So maybe do that tonight when you get home. Say, Mom and Dad, tell me about my baptism. 
what happened, where was it, who was around, who was there, and uh, that would be something cool. Maybe see some pictures that you haven't seen before, right? So when we think about baptism, we think about, of course, John the baptizer, and we think about Jesus, because John was Jesus' cousin. Remember that, they were, they were cousins. And the very first thing Jesus did in the Gospel of Mark, which is what we're reading this year, we're focusing on the Gospel, Gospel of Mark, was Jesus got baptized, right? So when you open, and that's a good book to read. Say you want to read one of the Gospels and say, ah, I'm kind of bored, I think I'll read one of the Gospels. we got four choices. you got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The shortest one is the one I like to start with, and that's Mark. He's the shortest one, right? 16 chapters, right? So, interesting thing about Mark is it starts right out, and the very first thing that happens is with Jesus is he gets baptized. The very first thing that happens. So, Jesus goes down to the River Jordan, and he gets baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist, which is cool. So, we ask, Pastor Ted, I thought, like, Jesus was the Son of God. He was perfect. And... Why did he have to get baptized? Very good question. Why did Jesus have to be baptized? Think, thinking caps on for a minute. Well, he didn't have to do it for himself because he didn't have to do anything. So that means he must have done it for us. So Jesus got baptized for us so that we could be baptized and be part of Jesus's family. So when we're baptized, we're baptized into Jesus's family, right, which is very cool, but Jesus did that for us, so we would have a way to have the same family, even though we didn't live at the time of Jesus, years later, we are part of his family, just the same as if we were alive when Jesus was alive, back a thousand years ago, but Jesus did it for us, so when we were baptized, we are baptized into Jesus' family, and therefore, when Jesus was raised from the dead, we are raised. interesting to think about, how can you be raised before you die? I can't even begin to explain that one. That was the mystery of God, right? But we're raised before we even die. We're raised with Christ, which is the part. So, the Gospel of Mark, follow along with me. That's what we're going to do. Focusing on this Sunday is the Sunday every year. Take a look at the pool one more time. Okay, we're back. So we're going to finish up. So, uh, new year. Let's have some new plans, some new goals, things to think about. And uh, maybe, maybe change some things in our lives. Add some things. Change some things. That's the time to do it at the beginning of the year. So we remember all our um, family members that we haven't seen in a long time. We'll remember friends, other schools, and relatives, and all that kind of stuff. Especially remember our hospital workers that are working so hard these days, doctors and nurses, and all the people who work in the hospital. Remember our policemen, our firemen, our military, all the folks who guide us and protect us. And also our teachers that uh, you know, work very hard for us each and every day. And our principal and all, all the folks that work in principal's office. I've worked very hard for you guys as well. And so we lift all those folks up, folks up in prayer. Gracious God, we lift all these people um, that we mentioned in prayer and any that lay heavy on our hearts, any that we know are maybe lonely or sick or uh, need some encouragement or some hope. We, we pray for them as well this time. And so we honor you, Lord, on this very first chapel of the new year, 2021, with the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Welcome back to uh, school and welcome to 2021. One more song from Mr. Brown. And then we will see you next time. Have a great, great weekend.
Okay, see you soon. Fruit of the Spirit is not a coconut. The fruit of the Spirit is not a coconut. If you want to be it, you might as well hear it. Can't be the fruit of the Spirit because the fruit is love, joy, peace, peace is kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Love, joy, peace, peace is kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Fruit of the spirit's not a banana. The fruit of the spirit's not a banana. If you wanna be it, you might as well hear it. Can't be the fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, faith, is kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Love, joy, peace, faith, is kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. The fruit of the spirit's not a watermelon. The fruit of the spirit's not a. If you wanna be it, you might as well hear it. Can't be the fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, peace, is kindness, goodness, faithful, gentleness, and self control. Love, joy, peace, peace, is kindness, goodness, faithful, gentleness, and self control. The fruit of the spirit's not a cherry. The fruit of the spirit's not a. If you wanna be it, you might as well hear it. Can't be the fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, peace, is kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Love, joy, peace, peace, is kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. It's not a grape. The fruit of the spirit is not a. If you wanna be a grape, you might as well hear it. Can't be the fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, peace, is kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Love, joy, peace, peace, is kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control.